Hello everyone, my name is Muhammad Abdul Salam, short short chemical engineer with a profound experience in process engineering and process design. The last video was an introduction to separators. I discussed the types of the separators, functions, and the internals of the separators. In today's video, I will explain the concepts for preliminary sizing of vertical two-phase separators. First, we have two laws that can be used to size the vertical vapor liquid separator. The first one is called the Souder Brown equation, and this is empirical. Sorry for that. And this is empirical, which means that this law was derived using experiments. The Vt, I will go first with the, with the samples here in the equation. So the Vt is the maximum allowable vapor velocity. The K is the empirical coefficient and has the same dimensions of the velocity. The following table contains the values of the K. If the separator is being used in the general surface, so the value of the K is 0.2 to 0.3, and this is the this is the, this column described to the metric units. And if this vertical separator shall be used in the suction of the compressor, so you will be more conservative. But especially for the suction of the compressors or any expensive equipment in the plant, you have to go to computational flow dynamics to test your design. But in normally in the general service, you don't you should you don't need to go to the CFD to test your design, and this is the, the, the values of the key value depending on the service. Normally, we will take it as a general. The row is the, the density. If the subscript is L, so this is for liquid, and this is for vapor, and so on. This empirical correlations can be used to calculate the maximum allowable vapor velocity, which shall calculate the minimum diameter of the vessel. We will describe, discuss this point later. The second one is the drag coefficient method. The drag coefficient method depends on we have to force is acting on the particles inside the separators. This is the droplets of the liquid. We have to force is acting on that droplet. The gravitational force And the drag force. The drag force due to the vapor velocity and the vapor flow upward, and the gravitational force due to the weight of this particle. So I will call the call the drag force F1, and the gravitational force is F, or I can call it Fg and Fd. So F Fd. F F D greater than F G, which means that the liquid droplets will be carried or carried away, will be carried with the vapor. F the drag force is lower than the gravitational force, which means that the liquid droplets will be accelerated down to the bottom of the vessel. The liquid will accelerate down to the bottom of the vessel. If the drag force is greater, is smaller than the, the, the gravitational force, the liquid droplets will accelerate down to the vessel. If the drag force is higher than the gravitational force, the liquid droplets will be carried away with the vapor. So if the drag force is equal to the gravitational force, in that way, the droplets will go down to the bottom of the vessel at a constant speed. Here, it is called at a constant speed. Constant speed. We will use this correlations to drive. We will not drive this correlations today, but this formula is has been derived from the the the, the equilibrium or so the the. To make the drag force equal to the gravitational force, we can use this point 
to drive these correlations, but we will go directly with these correlations. I will go with the dimensions also here, with the samples here. Vt. Vt is the maximum allowable vapor velocity. The Tp is the droplet's diameter. The rho is a liquid. C dash is a drag coefficient. Normally, the drag coefficient is a function of the vapor velocity. And we need to calculate the vapor velocity. So, according to the JEPSA handbook, these correlations can be used to calculate the x axis of the following curve. These correlations can be used. This is the viscosity of the vapor, and this is the density of the gas. This is the droplets, particle, particle diameters, and this is the density. We can calculate this value, this value here in the x-axis. So, for example, if this value is 8, so we will go up till the intersection of with, that, with this curve, and then we will go to horizontally to find that the drag coefficient is 1, so we can put here in the equations to be in 1. The importance or the benefits of this equation is that it it helps you calculate the maximum diameter that will be carried away, the maximum diameter that will be carried away with the vapor. This correlation is important. So what next if I calculated the maximum allowable vapor velocity using one of two formulas, the drag coefficient method, or the uh, solder prone equations, then we have to go to size the separators. First, using, or I will, I will make it as a matrix. First, we this is the start, okay. Then calculate the maximum allowable vapor velocity. After calculation of the maximum allowable vapor velocity, we have input here, which is the maximum, the, the volumetric flow rate, volumetric flow rate. Of the vapor of the vapor. So using the, the the maximum allowable vapor velocity with the volumetric flow rate to calculate the area or minimum area. Then using the minimum area, we can calculate the the minimum diameter. Then, after calculating the minimum diameter, I will use this minimum diameter as a starting point for the iterations. I need to define the spaces or the, the spaces inside the separators. The first one is HT, which is the, the space above the demister pad. And the, this space, empirically, this is from the piece to practice. All these correlations I will write here from the piece to practice and not a mandatory. The HT is 0.15 times the diameter of the vessel or minimum 12 inch. This in case of there is a demister bad, but if there is no demister bad, this value will be zero. Okay, then this is the demister bad. The demister bad normally is six inch thick layer, and we have two layers here. The first layer, the, or the top one, is the three inch. The top one at three inch, which density twelve pound per feet cube, and the bottom one is three inch with a density nine pound per feet cube. This value can be used in case of there is um, non-availability of the vendor's data. The vapor space HV, HV can be minimum three feet or equal to 
0.5 times the diameter of the vessel or maximum 6 feet. This is the paper space. This is the length between the top feed nozzle, the HF is a, the, the space between the top feed nozzle and the bottom feed nozzle. And the HF is, can be calculated depending on there is inlet hood here or not. If there is inlet hood, if there is inlet hood, so this value would be 0.5 times the diameter of the top feed nozzle plus, plus 6 inch plus 0.5 times the diameter of the bottom nozzle. If there is there, there is here there is inlet hood. If there is only if there is no inlet hood, so this value will be 12 inch. And this is the value or the space between the shutdown level and the bottom feed nozzle, and can be calculated using 0.5 times the diameter of the bottom nozzle plus 6 inch and if there is no shutdown level so we can make it 12 inch this value this is the space between the high high level and the shutdown level and normally it can be calculated depending on 5 minutes residence time normally this value, the HC and also the HL, is a function of the residence time. So the residence time here is 5 minutes. And the residence time here, between the low, low level and high, high level, and you can calculate it normally as uh, 15 minutes and so on. But this depends on the values that you get from the client. So this value, the HL, is a normal liquid level and this is the shutdown level which means that depending on the accumulation of the liquid flow rate what for example if the liquid flow rate is all meter cube per minute and we define that the residence time here is 15 minutes so the, the volume of that point the volume of that space will be volume of L will be 15 times the L and depending on the area of the vessel we can calculate the space or the HL will be volume subscript L times by divided by the area of the separators so those both values the HL normal liquid level and the shutdown compressor level can be calculated using the resistance time you can estimate preliminary the resistance time to be five minutes for the compressor shutdown level and 15 minutes for the normal liquid level but in some cases the client your client will supply these values to you the hp at the bottom space and it can be 12 inch but in some cases Maybe there is a pump uh, that uh, will suck the liquid from the separators and push it or pump it away in any way. So this value will be adjusted depending on the net positive suction head of the pump. Okay, so normally if this liquid is going away without any pump and there is no pumping requirement, so you can use this value as a 12 inch, but if there is Another requirements regarding the pump, nipples of suction head, so yeah, this value, the HP, will, will be calculated depending on the nipples of suction head. In the next example, in the next video, I will take an example for sizing a vertical vapor liquid separator. manually okay so stay tuned and i am looking forward to see you again in the next video bye bye